worship the Lord. So we're doing that in understanding. Let's, let's allow the Holy Spirit to minister through us unto God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. In First Corinthians chapter 14, you know, Apostle Paul just gave us a mystery here about how he, he relates to God when it comes to worshiping Him. He said from verse 14, he said, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. He said, what is the conclusion? Then I will pray with the spirit, I will also pray with the understanding. But he didn't step from there. He said, I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with understanding. He said, otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will you occupy the place of, you know, place of uninformed say amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say. For you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. Praise the Lord. So what, what, what is the wisdom that we do get here that when we sing in understanding, worshiping God, Paul said when we do that in the spirit, he said we are giving thanks well. Praise the Lord. Does that mean when we give things in understanding, it is not taken as we are giving it well? But there must be a dimension again to giving of the thanks on the, on the thanks, I mean, giving thanks to God, singing unto Him in the Holy Ghost. Paul said, when you do it, you have done it well. It cannot be faulted. Because when you do it, it is the Holy Ghost that is giving thanks to your spirit unto God. You may not understand what you are saying. For Paul said, you have given, you have blessed God well. Praise the Lord. So let's make it uh, a lifestyle. Sing it in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. He said, well, I, do, I pray in understanding. He said, I also pray with my spirit. Because oftentimes when we pray in understanding, we pray amiss. Praise God. Because your understanding can only relate to physical things, can only relate to the things around you. But when you begin, when you switch into praying, you know, switch to, to your spirit, then you're able to contact the realm of the unseen with your spirit when you do it in, in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. I just feel as just I encourage you to do that. Let's do that often. It's not only when we get to the place of prayer that we, you know, pray in the Holy Ghost. Even while you're drowning, while you're doing, you know, doing uh, dishes in the kitchen, when you're cooking, praise the Lord. It's not only when we still want to have a quiet time. Praise the Lord. We have been we have been we have been commanded to pray without ceasing. How do we how do we how do we measure up to that demand of pray without ceasing? I think when we do pray in the Holy Ghost more, then we'll be able to receive that scripture. You're driving, you're praying the Holy Ghost. You're doing this just in the kitchen. You know, we spend so much time talking and just just talking what is what is not necessary, you know. We just waste time talking. But if we spend that talking more, praying the Holy Spirit, there will be a more fruit unto our God. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We're still looking at the wisdom of of God as regards to the mystery of giving. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. When we're looking at it, we're, we're looking at it more. Amen. In Psalm 35, verse 17. 35, verse 27. Psalm 35. Praise the Lord. This is your dear read. Psalm 35. Verse 27. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Praise the Lord. So let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. 
And let them say continually, let God be magnified. Who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant? In other words, God wants us prosperous. As his people, he desires that we prosper. God, God delights in our prosperity. You know, as when we're not prospering, God is not excited about, about that faith. When we, when we, when we, we're not, we're not seen to be prospering, God is not excited about it. It becomes an issue to God. When we're not prospering, He does not delight God. When He does not see us prospering, when He does not see us, you know, Increasing when it's not seen us blossoming, God is disturbed in that kind of situation. When we're not fruitful, God is disturbed. When we're not, God is not, when we're not increasing, when we're not flowing in abundance, it becomes a matter to God. Praise the Lord. If the Bible says it takes pleasure only, only. In other words, if we are not prospering, God is not happy. Just like we 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 we, we will also not be happy. You be concerned. So it's a concern to God when His servant or His His son or any of His people is not prospering, considering all that He has made available, because. One thing about God is that God will not expect you to produce what He has not invested into you. For God to expect us to prosper, then He must have made resources available in us to produce that prosperity. It would be wrong for God to expect me to produce what He has not invested in me. In other words, if God is expecting me that I should prosper, then he must have also made provision available for me to express that prosperity. Praise the Lord. He said, He takes delight in the prosperity of His servant. It's just like you going to the farm and you're expecting to, to harvest where you have not planted anything. God is the wise God. He wouldn't expect prosperity in us if He has not put things in us that will produce that prosperity. Praise the Lord. You know, when, when you look at Genesis chapter 1, the creation, you know, the, the mind, the, 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 the background to Genesis chapter 1, to the creation story, is like a secret. Except you allow the Holy Spirit to breathe on you to be able to unlock it and be able to apply it to our lives. Praise the Lord. When God was to, when God was to, you know, bring things forth, all that He did was to speak. He spoke. For example, He wanted the sea to be filled with things like the fishes. What He did was He spoke to the sea and said, "Let the sea bring forth stuff." And then, all of a sudden, the fishes and all the creatures of this just came alive. When he wanted grass from the ground, he simply spoke to it to produce, and there was a release. I want to believe that, yes, God spoke, but before he spoke, he must have made something available there that he had to call forth to come forth. Praise the Lord. So if God is expecting us to prosper, and if that will give him delight, then I want to believe so strongly that he must have made provision available. He must have invested in He must have put in us things that will produce that prosperity. And as a matter of fact, as a child of God, we are already called blessed. If you are born again, you have received Jesus as the Lord and personal Savior, you don't have to pray for blessing again. You are already blessed by that union. You know, asking God to bless me again is like asking for what you already have. For example, this microphone is with me now, and I go to Pastor Bimba and I say, give me my microphone. I said, give me my microphone. 
and I begin to get angry. I said, give me my microphone. I'm using the microphone. I said, I'm about to be, but I'm about to give me my microphone. You will not look at me, sir. You know, you want to, first of all, know me. But if I become a nuisance, <laughs> you give back to me and say, oh, you already have it, sir. Tell somebody, you already have the blessing. You already blessed. Praise the Lord. And this chapter 1, verse 3 tells me so. Praise the Lord. Let's see. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. said, Blessed be God. Hallelujah. He said, Blessed be God who will. Is that what we want to do there? Always thinking. <laughs> Always planning. Always waiting for us to ask him before he will bless us. Praise the Lord. Verse 3. He said, Blessed be God who has already blessed us with what? Oh Lord, can someone just wave and say thank you, Jesus? Can you just give me some worship? Because you are already blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then just, 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 just let's, let's just thank him. Because we are already endowed with the blessing of God. Hallelujah. You know, this scripture has a way of just getting me intoxicated, just getting me excited. Anytime the Holy Spirit can just return my heart, I, I, just, I, just, I just begin to wonder, what, what is it that, what is, how, how, how much God has loved me? So blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing, hallelujah, in heavenly places, in Christ. So if you are in Christ, you already have every spiritual blessing in heavenly places has been downloaded into you. You already have it. It's not that you are going to have it. It's already your possession. Is You are endowed with it. Hallelujah. So you don't need to anybody telling you, Ah, come on. You know, you need deliverance. No, 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 you have you. Deliverance for who? <laughs> because I say it's good for deliverance because you lack knowledge. How will you say somebody in Christ will need deliverance? He is blessed. But you know what? If you don't know the truth, the enemy will make a misdemeanor of you. If you don't know the truth, he will, even, he will even use what you have that you don't know you have against you. Satan is smart in this game. You are already blessed. To be blessed means to be empowered. One of the many, because it's loaded with many. One of the many of being blessed is that you will be empowered to prosper. That's one of the, out of, one, out of many, many of the word blessed. Another word for it is that it's graced. You and I have been graced. We have been blessed. You already have the spiritual enablement, the spiritual capacity to be truthful. It's already there. We already have that spiritual enablement. Praise the Lord. What makes lion to roar? Is because by nature he has the en enablement to roar. Because he has it, he doesn't struggle to, to roar. It would be difficult for a cat to want to roar like a lion because he didn't have the capacity. He can only meow, not roar. And when the lion says, I envy, I envy cats. <laughs> Even when they look alike, they don't stand the same. Because their capacities are different. You carry so much. You are a carrier of great stuff. And that's why Satan is always afraid of you. He's always afraid. Because what you carry is dangerous. If you just come to realize all that you have carried, you carry in you, and come to the reality of it, you become untouchable for the enemy. Jesus knew in his time, that is why evil... He's just coming, they begin to scream, have you come to touch us? Because he knew what they carried. The issue that we have, most of the time, is that we, are not, we don't even know what we have or who we are. And ignorance 
is one terrible weapon that Satan uses against God's people. But also we are blessed. We are blessed. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. And you know what? The blessing we carry, no man can place a curse on you again. The blessing is so powerful that there is no curse that can negate it. Oh my God. It does not matter if they come to meet you in your dream and they curse you. Just smile because this one cannot be cursed. Because even when a king hired a prophet to curse God's people, when he got there, he saw the blessing on them, said, I can't curse them. He saw what they tried. He said, he changed his mind. He will return the... He said, these ones, they are blessed. I cannot curse them. They are uncursable. Tell somebody, I cannot be cursed. <laughs> I am too blessed to be cursed. In fact, the Bible tells me that anyone that will want to curse me is cursed. The, the blessing that I carry is so much that you want to curse me, the Bible says, you are cursed. That's why, you know, we have been at, Jesus said, ah, when somebody calls you, you bless them back home. You don't have, don't have to their, don't have to their trouble. <laughs> don't, they already for costing you, they are cost. If you now place trust on them, are you uh, are waiting? Nah. You won't kill them. You bless them back. At least reduce the, the punishment. <laughs> Let it be, make it lighter for them because they, they come and bless you upon Abraham. God said, I will bless them that bless you. But anybody dare to curse you, a minimal hand to curse you, I'm going to curse the person. Ah! We are dangerous in Christ Jesus. Dangerous. That's why the Bible says we should be humble because we are powerful. But be humble. You carry so much substance. Be humble. Be humble. Hallelujah. So, God has blessed us with those ritual blessings. That is why he would expect that we prosper and it takes delight in our prosperity. Hallelujah. Now, how, how, do we, how do we now balance it now? How do we operate under the blessing? Praise the Lord. It's just like a child that is brilliant. But if he still go to school, his, bril- his brilliance will be, will be wasted. Praise the Lord. If a child is somebody is brilliant, he has capacity, but he, he, he's not, that capacity is not, you know, it's not challenged. It's not put to work. Even though he has the brain to become a doctor, he may end up being a conductor. Even though he has the capacity to be a doctor, so if he does not function, if he does not work it, if he does not work it, if he does not pass place demand on that thing that he has, even though he should that endowment should better his life, he may turn out to be the worst of all men. Praise the Lord. So how do we function as a blessing that we might? We're able to translate that spiritual thing to physical fruitfulness. So that we begin to see that it's just a spiritual thing. But when you carry the blessing of God, there should be the effect of it. The effect of the blessing is the physical things we see. Praise the Lord. The riches, the, the and other things, wealth, influence is part of the blessing. Hallelujah. That's the physical, that's material. But there is how we ought to operate under the blessing that will, tra- that will be able to translate what is spiritual and we seem to have the effect of it in the natural. Praise the Lord. First of all, for us to understand how to function, we must understand the purpose of the blessing first. Why has God blessed us with those ritual blessings? What's the purpose of it? Why has God blessed us? Why? Why does He want us to prosper? Why, does, why, why, why would God want us in abundance? Why? Because we don't understand, you know, the purpose of the thing, 
abuse is inevitable. So we must understand why would God want us prosper? Prosperous. Why would He want us fruitful? Why would He want us? Why would He want us in abundance? Why would God want us to be a person of influence, a person of authority, a person of power? Why would God want us to be a person that will wear so much authority that witches and wizards they bow to us? Why? Because if we don't understand it, then we begin to malfunction. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let's see Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Luke 12, from verse 15. Jesus told a story here. I want to read. He said, and he said unto him, and he said, okay, and he said unto them, Take heed and be of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Watch. And he took a Bible unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What do I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruit. And he said, This is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and be greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my, See everything? My soul, thou hast, hast much good laid out for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and marry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. When, when, then whose shall those things be which thou art provided? That so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Hallelujah. Now, what is the wisdom for us here? The Bible says the man here, it was a parable. We have been warned to beware of covetousness. The bottom line of covetousness is selfishness. A covetous person wants all things for himself. He wants to get everything, can all that he can can, and sit on the can. A covetous person wants everything. He thinks about himself alone. He does not think about other persons. He considers himself alone. He wants things for himself alone. It is self, self, my, my, my. That is how a covetous person thinks. And Jesus warned us, he said, Beware of it. That is not the stuff that you are expected. You, you are not made of that stuff. As a child of God, we are made in the likeness of God. You are made in the likeness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said, Beware of covetousness. And he told the parable of this man. Now, this man's ground produced that year beyond his expectation. What came forth from his, from that season of, of farming for him, what he put in the soil, that year yielded unexpected harvest. He found himself in abundance that his preparation could not handle. Before the harvest came, he had built brand storage facilities. According to his own calculation, he had, a, he had an expectation of the amount of abundance that should come. But that year, God embarrassed him with blessing. The Bible says his grant produced plentifully. And you know what? Because he lacked understanding of why God brought that plenty harvest that year, the blessing came. Suddenly, he became the general, the, 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 the manager over the blessing that he did not, so to say, expect. He, all of a sudden, he became wise. He became the, the CEO. He became the chief planner over God's blessing. <laughs> you know, that's what we do. It's my money. 
is my beat. But so what is it that a man has that he has not been given? What is it that you have? Even the brain that you are using to producing, that you think is because of your brainless, who made your brain sound? The Bible says he has given us the gift of a sound mind. There's nothing you have that is done. You know, when the blessing came, when the, the, the plenty stuff came, when, as the abundance came, he started planning. And he missed it. He started projecting to the future. Now it's time to build a, a new house. You know, I'm bringing it down to our level now. It's time to buy the latest car in town. I've been seeing that Bugatti. I'm betting you. <laughs> it's time to buy the latest in town. It's time to, you know, and in all these plans, God did not feature in it. The giver of the resource. Everything he planned to spend on himself. My. He said he will eat, drink, and make merry, and it does not matter whatever happened anywhere. Bamu, bamu, like you, I'll be with anybody. Once it is well with me, I don't bloody care what is wrong with other people. This man was wicked. After all, the blessing came from God, but as the blessing came, he shut God out of the door. <laughs> when it was time to begin to allocate the resources, he, he, he pushed God out. Get out! I don't want to leave you. And everyone was watching. The reason why God blesses us is that first of all, we may be a blessing to Him. That's why. That's why. The reason why God has blessed us, it is that first of all, first thing first, that you be a blessing back to Him. Because that is the reason why He gave you the resource that you have. Oftentimes, we spend God's money over ourselves <laughs> that He puts in our custody as a steward of His resource. We just, we just begin to plan. We can ask God to bless us. After you, do we ask God, how do I spend the money? When was that that you pray, Lord, now money has come. Oh. God, how do I spend this money? Oftentimes we don't. We just want to go forward to it and watch you that thing. I already have a plan before the money came. So I think the money is coming to settle the matter on ground. The matter, matters are already on ground. So the money comes that you don't. Holy Spirit, no. Even God knows that we have to build another house now. But you know what? God is interested on how we handle his resources under our stewardship. Because you are just a steward. This man, you know, understand that God brought this abundance to him and God had a plan for it. All of a sudden, he brought his own plan out and he started locating resources. And after God thought, and God judged his plan foolish and called him a fool. He said, that night, you are, come back. So where are we going? If you are now in boss, you know, what, what God wants to do with us is that he wants to partner with us to execute his will on earth. The will, God has a plan for this earth. God has his will. God has his purpose. There are certain things God wants done. And what he wants us to be, is to be a partner with him first. That is why God demands that we be a giver. Listen, you just, and what, one good thing about it is that as a child of God, you already by that nature a giver. You, you, already, you, already, you, you already have that generosity in you. Even you. Every child of God has the capacity to give. Has the capacity to be generous. Is there. You don't have to pray for it. You only need to begin to express that side of you. The generous side of you. That is what God needs. It has to come to fall. It has to come to the surface. You have to begin to express it. When you become generous, God begins to partner with you to change things on this earth. He begins to partner with you. Um, 
bring resources towards you because he knows that as he, he, he put that those in your custody, you will use it the way you want it to be expended, not the way you want it. A giver, you know, you see that in that place, in the place we read in Psalm 35, verse 17, it said, God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. In other words, as a child of God, you must have that servanthood mentality, you know, establishing you, that you are God's servant. A servant does not have his own interest above his master. A servant will put the interest of his master first. There is a servant of God in you. And that is what God wants to bless. When you become a servant truly that he has made you, he wants to partnership with us. He wants to partner with us. He wants to, he wants to pass through us to bless his work. Pass through us to bless humanity. Pass through us to bless the poor. That is the reason for prosperity. That's the reason for riches. That's the reason why God wants us to be in abundance, that we might use it to execute His will. God is looking for men that will execute His will on earth. The Bible says He brought a man from the east who will execute His will. Oftentimes we don't have people who want to execute God's will in church. Rather, we want to execute our own thing. God has a plan. He wants to touch a life. He has a plan to bring his word, the, the, the message of the, of, of the gospel, to many people. He wants to reach out. So when you come, when, when you have that thing registered in you, that God has blessed me, that I might be a blessing to him, that I might be a blessing, it is fundamental to have that understanding. The reason why he has blessed you is that you may be a blessing to him and to humanity. To him and to humanity. So, and how do you express that? You have to be a cheerful giver, a giver. When God finds a giver in you, he, 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 will, be, he will be confident to entrust into your hands resources. Because he knows that you will use it according to his will. Not to service your own thing, your own lust, your own ego, your own interest. That man's life was cut short because he misjudged. His judgment was wrong about how to manage his resources. The substance that you have, God is interested in how you manage it. He must come first when you are to manage your substance. That's why the Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance. Honor Him with your substance. You must, you must have that readiness in you, ready mind in you. That whatever I, I, I have received, it is just entrusted into my hand. It belongs to God. I am just a trustee. And the trustee is expected to carry out the interest of the body that has appointed him. As an appointment upon your life to be a vessel of honor for God on earth. This man failed here. So, giving is, 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 you know, why is this nation the way it is today with all the resources that God has given us? It's because we have men in power that are just covetous. Greed has eaten them up and so they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are like, just picture Jonah when he was swallowed by the fish. So greed has swallowed them up just like the fish swallowed Jonah. That is why the country is like this. But in church, it should be so. We belong to the kingdom of God. By nature, you should be excited giving. That's what God, that, that is what God expects of us. You should be excited. Let's see 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 
Let's read from verse 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please be ready already. <laughs> now, verse 8 is, 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 you know, before we get to verse 8, there was a, 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 a line of thoughts that ended with verse 8. But it says, he that, if it is the law, it says, he that soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly. But he that soweth out bountifully shall also reap out bountifully. Then I said, let everybody give. Everyone let him give as he has proposed in his heart. And goes on to say, in verse 8, he said, For and God is able to make all grace abound. Grace is supernatural strength. It's supernatural capacity enablement that God gives, that brings, that, that, that brings manifestations that natural capacity cannot produce. That's what grace does. It comes upon a natural man to begin to produce things that cannot be produced naturally. That's what grace does. And God said, God is able to make that grace abound towards a travel giver. When God finds a travel giver in you and I, a giver that gives to God with excitement, that gives not grudgingly, not grudgingly, not by compulsion, but giving to God with understanding that whatever he has received is actually God's resource, is God's own. He is only a steward, who is only a servant, and is expected to expend it as God wants. The Bible says when God finds that person, he will make grace available in abundance of that person that he will always be having. Kind. He will always be having in, in, in all sufficiency, in all things. Why? That he may be able to abound to every good work that God will want him to do for him. That's why we make grace available for every good work that God will direct his heart to channel the rest of his feet. That's why grace comes. It is not for him to use that upon himself and just service his own loss, service his own greed, service his own interest. No. The grace is released that that cheerful giver will always be having. He will always be having. It's a mystery. That's, this, this, this thing about giving is, is a mystery. But he will always be having. Even in hard economy situations, he will always be having. Even when others are crying and are, are in, in serious poverty, he will always be having. He's guaranteed because this is the wisdom of God. He will always be having. Let him put his business in the places where they have economic crisis. His own business will prosper because it's in partnership with God. He will always be having. Let, let him let everywhere he goes, whether in the field or in the open, whether in the desert or anywhere, he will always be having because there is something supernatural upon him that, that makes him able. Oh God. He just, he just able financially. He just made able. It's a spiritual thing. And that capacity does not come upon a stingy person. And that's why when you have opportunities to give, or you become stingy. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, and in verse 24, praise the Lord. He said, there is one that scatters, yet increases. He scatters. Whatever he has, he's, just, he's a distributor of God's resources. He distributes. He distributes to the poor. He gives to his pastor, gives to the church, pays his tithe regularly, 
his eyes is, is always out for who to bless. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as he scatters, he will keep increasing. But there is one that holds more than less. There is a, there is, there is a substance you don't, we, we don't, we don't, we, we, you don't withhold. When you withhold what is supposed to release, the Bible says it will bring poverty. It means, it's, it's not a cost. What is supposed, it's just like a farmer that refused to sow in the planting season. If he refused to sow and decided to eat it, withholding it, eat it up. When the next harvest time will come, he will have nothing. When other farmers are jubilating and celebrating abundance, it will be a lack and penalty. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. There is what you must not withhold. There is some. There is. There is something. You know. If you keep what you should release, then there will be some crisis when it comes to having, because it's God that guarantees who have and who will not have. <laughs> it is God. It is that grace that will determine. Once the grace comes upon you, you will always be having. It will just be coming. Things will just be flowing towards you. Because you are in partnership with God. You yourself will not be able to explain it. You won't be able to explain it. It will be like others will look at you as if some will say, you, maybe you are, you are using means. <laughs> because there will be a way it will just be locating you, flowing towards you, because you carry something by the reason of your function under the grace of God. Hallelujah. So every opportunity to give is only for you to access the grace of God for abundance. When you come to the church, giving to, you know, when we talk about ah, it's because ah, you know, they want to collect our uh, money. <laughs> In the first place, it's not your money. When you begin to have that mentality, is mine. Look at that, that, that man that Jesus spoke about. All his thinking was my, 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 my field, my van, my soul, my heat, her drink, my, my. And God said, tonight, we're deleting you. You are not fit again to leave. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. God hates stingy people. When you keep what God has given you, when he needs it to be used to bless his work, to bless men, to bless the poor, when you keep back, it is wickedness in the sight of God. God does not take it lightly. Look at what, what killed that man. It was his plant that killed him. Not which is there now. It was, it was, it's not that anybody attacked him. Who took him home? Eh? In that story, Satan, which is a wizard, Attack from home. <laughs> that was from me, from himself. It was God that said, "Put people." Because you know, this God we are serving, may, may we know Him in Jesus' name. It was God that said, "No, this one is not rich towards us. We check His account towards our things; it is zero. God has an account. He has an account. God knows how rich we are towards Him." And that's why the opportunity you have, invest your time. The Bible says when you invest your time to the things of God, you are laying treasure for yourself in heaven. There is an account in heaven that you must deposit things inside it. May your account in heaven not be empty. Because when you need to withdraw from it, the Bible says, let nobody be cheated. It is what you sow that you reap. Because when it's time for, to, if you go to the bank and all that you have in your account is 5,000 and you wrote a check of 1 million and say, and you just walk here, I don't have any. That's a criminal that will soon land in police cell. And you put a check there, 1 million. In fact, when, when, when the cashier sees 1 million, so what they will expect you first and smile to, to want to check your account. <laughs> By the time it goes through the. 
and sees 5,000. You know, he's counting us towards his God's head. You lose that respect immediately. <laughs> he was like, he was like, sir, are you expecting some money? He said, ah, no, he's there. I was okay. Security. <laughs> we have a case to handle here. Oftentimes, we are demanding from heaven when our account is low. How rich are you towards God? Let me talk to you. Billy David, how rich are you towards God? That's the question. How rich? How, how, how is my account in heaven? How is it? How is it? What is the state of my account in heaven? Jesus said, lay treasure for yourself in heaven. So each time you come, you give to God, you give to his servant, you give to the poor, you know, you are helping yourself. <laughs> because that is God's own wisdom. Those things are your uh, account uh, details. They give you account details now. You know, I mean, some of us have some account number. Praise the Lord. Your account details. If I want to put money in your account, and give me account details. So, when a person to give comes, that's your account details you have to, to lodge money into. Praise the Lord. You give to the work of God. Pay your tithes. Give good offering. You are laying treasure for yourself in heaven. You are laying treasure for yourself. And you know what? Heaven was when there is a need for a release, heaven will not deny you. Because you have invested in your account. Heaven will not say no to you. I don't know whether you have money in your account and you put your ATM card and you have functioning. <laughs> and you need the money badly. And he said, uh, 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 switch in, in, uh, 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 internet switch, inoperative. <laughs> it's not like you don't have money there. It's resistant. That, but when it comes to heaven's system, it's ever perfect. It will never deny you what you deserve. But it means that every day you leave, you're looking for opportunity to lay treasure for yourself in heaven. By being a cheerful giver of the things of God, giving to the servant of God that is feeding you, giving to the poor. The Bible says when you give to the poor, you are, lend, you are, you are lending to God. <laughs> you are lending to God. And God will pay you back. But somebody said, to everyone that asks you, give. When somebody comes to you and asks you, be ready to, be, to show some kindness. Be generous. But say, I don't have. Even when you ask, there is maybe, at that time, you are low in whatever, be kind. Hallelujah. Because God has wired us to be a blessing. We are programmed to be a giver. That is our make. We can't just stop giving because that is our nature. That's how God has made us. That is the nature of God himself. So, please, no matter how little you have, learn to share. Learn to share. Give what is to be given to God. Give to the poor. Give to the man of God. Give to the things of God. Give to, you know, give to your parents. We're going to break it down again. We, these things we know, but you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As we talk more about it, we remind ourselves about it, and then we, we continue to encourage ourselves to live that lifestyle of a giver. Once we, have, we, have, we sustain that mood, abundance will be a normal thing. It will just be normal. We will always be happy. Sufficiency will just become a, a normal thing. It becomes, becomes common. We are just sufficient. We are just having more than enough. I didn't have your amen. I want to begin to pray as we close. Let's, let, let us just think over these things that we have received. I just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Just, just, just pray in the Holy Ghost as we start to close this evening. God loves the cheerful giver. Why? Because he wants to partner with him to get his will done on earth. He wants to pass through him to bless his work. He wants to pass, pass through him to bless the poor. 
He wants to pass through him to touch a life. He wants to pass through him to make things happen on earth. Just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in understanding, and receive this word with faith. Receive it with faith and declare, I am a cheerful giver. I am a giver. God has wired me, has made me a blessing. I am a blessing. I am a blessing. I am a blessing. The blessing of God is upon me that I might be a blessing to Him, that I might be a blessing to His work, that I might be a blessing to the poor, that I might be a blessing to His servant, that I might be a blessing to humanity. Just declare it in the name of Jesus. Declare it, I am a giver. Yes, yes you are. Yes, you are.